Now on to market movers. The ADP private payroll number came in with a jump in jobs at 156,000, exceeding expectations of 150,000. This Friday, the government reveals how many Americans were added to payrolls in the month of July. Here's what pro traders at CME Group have to say. CME Group launched Micro E-Mini Futures Contracts. Discover how a smaller Micro E-Mini Futures Contract opens the world to greater trading possibilities. Welcome to Market Movers. I'm Jim Urio with Scott Martin. Hi, Jim. So, Scott, this is an unusual show. Mm. We have the unemployment number Friday of this week, and I'm not at all convinced it's even the biggest event this week. What? We have the Fed is going to cut rates. We have Apple earnings, the, you know, obviously the biggest of the whole earnings And some season. others, yes. So tell us, what's what's the most important? What will you focus on? I, I still look at the jobs number, Jim, because I think the jobs number, obviously despite earnings, because those kind of have their own influences, the jobs number drives a lot of things, in my opinion, sure. economically, but also I think the Federal Reserve, because of the fact the Fed is kind of at this crossroads now where data has started to reheat up. We've started to see inflation data maybe tick up a bit. And so the Fed number, uh, the Fed decision rather, as it relates to the non-farm payrolls number is still the big yeah, I, mover I agree. in my point. I think it's a bigger deal because the Fed's decision is based on things that we've already seen. The jobs number is something that we're seeing for the first time. Right. An interesting point. The Fed is too, we think, right? At least as far as we know. But the numbers after the Fed me meeting. So that's another interesting way the markets are going to have to digest so two at, points of data. At the end of the trade talk, I'm going to ask you if Apple's then below the Fed. So start thinking about that now. But before we dive into our trade discussion, I'd like to point out that these are examples, not as rec not recommendations or advice. When we priced this out, the September NASDAQ futures was trading 79.80. Scott. 79.80, Jim. A little skosh maybe under, say, about 8,000. I mean, we are, week after week, we're getting some big numbers, it seems like. Some For monumental sure. numbers on yes. market movers here. So seeing as all that is going on, I do want to maybe pick out some interesting areas, I think, in the charts, in pricing of options, Jim, in the NASDAQ that I think are kind of unique when it maybe comes to expressing yourself, in my case, in a more bullish fashion today. So specifically, Jim, looking at buying the NASDAQ week three, August, 8,080 call spread for 25 ticks. This trade risks 500 to put on to make potential 1,000, expires August 16th, so mid-month. Yeah. But I want to pay for this. You know my style oh, right like these it. days because I, I want a bullish say, stance, yeah. but I don't mind getting long somewhere. So, my friend, I found a nice put to sell at 76.50 in the NQs with the same expiration August 16th, so mid-month, for, guess what, my friend, 25 ticks. Okay. So my outlay effectively is zero in the sense of I do have the risk here of getting long at 76.50, but I do have the expression bullishly if this does fill out because I've got that okay. way to sell the put to pay for it. I like it. I like it because, and it, particularly if people understand the risk. And as it, as you said, the risk is being along at 76.50. That's 4% below the market right now. I didn't just do that calculation. I did it before we filmed this. Oh, uh, I thought, yeah, you're that good, Jim. We all believe it. Market, okay. But if you're comfortable being long there, then that's a fine trade. And it's I'm, about 4% lower, sure. like you said. So it's not that big of a right. move. But also, if you just look at the charts and levels, it seems like that's an area where that at least the market, if it trades down, there, it's not going to stay there. Agreed. Now, this will surprise no one. I'm also looking at this week somewhat bullish. And I'm looking at the September micro NASDAQ futures. And you know how I like to do the stop ins. If it starts to trade with strength, I think it's a spot then to buy it after it's shown a little bit of strength. So 80-10, 30 ticks above where the market's trading now, I think is a spot to stop in with 82.10, 200 points higher as a target, and a stop loss placed back below 78.90. Now, when I trade these micros, I widen it out a little bit longer because it's less, you know, less notional, obviously, and I can do that and sleep better. You? Uh, don't stop believing, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to you, because you've put these on specifically and in the past, been good. and they've worked out very well. And so I like the expression, too, with the micros in this sense, because let's face it, if you do get, say, stopped in, as it were, and you do want to hedge those out even in the future, use a couple more micros at different levels to do so. Okay. okay, so I asked before, uh, we said the unemployment number was number one. Between the Fed and Apple, it's Fed then Apple, right? It's, it's got to be Fed. But here's the other funny thing about the way the calendar works, Jim. We get these different pieces of data points or market moving events on different days. So watch the S&P and love, the NQs as they react. I love weeks like this. Thanks for joining us on Market Movers. I'm Jim Urio, where we are helping to make you a better trader. For more Business First AM, check us out on social media. We're on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And go to businessfirstam.com for where to see our show on TV.